okay yes, so in the last class uh, we were dealing with uh, the various theories of uh, learning as Sorry. well as uh, learning theory of personality uh, we know that what is uh, learning do you remember the definition definition which i gave to you so we know that the learning it is a continuous process in our life and the definition states that learning it is a relatively permanent change in behavior that occurs as a result of experience so in this definition uh, it is mentioned that through learning some behavioral changes takes place and these behavioral changes takes place as a result of practice as well as experience and when we talk about the various uh, theories of learning in personality mainly we have to deal with the um, pavlov's theory as well as skinner's theory so in the syllabus these two theories are there and uh, what are the various theories of learning do you remember that is one is classical conditioning it is by pavlov and operant conditioning then law of effect these are the various theories of learning and um, the classical conditioning uh, you know that uh, it is also called it is a type of learning and it is also called the pavlovian conditioning and um, what is conditioning conditioning means it is a reaction or response to an object object in the sense stimulus and uh, by a person or animal and it can be modified by learning or conditioning uh, so after conditioning the behavior or response become uh, more frequent and also it becomes more predictable so that we call as the that stage we call as the conditioning so in short the conditioning means it is a response to a particular stimulus and it happens inside a person and this type of behavior it can be modified by learning or conditioning then <clears throat> today we are going to deal with the theory by a skinner or it is also called and do you remember the uh, various stages of classical conditioning in conditioning there are three stages last day last class we had uh, we had already gone through that three stages in classical conditioning that is uh, first is before conditioning then during conditioning what happens and after conditioning hmm? remember yes yes ma'am okay. okay hope it is clear and what are the key principles of classical conditioning Activity. there are five acquisition then acquisition. is extinction extinction is realization and discrimination is spontaneous recovery stimulus generalization and uh, last is the stimulus discrimination these are the five key principles of classical conditioning and yes. now uh, today we are going to deal with um, operant conditioning so operant operant the term itself says that something operates mm? so this is also a method of learning this operant conditioning it is also a method of uh, learning and we can say that this type of learning occurs through rewards and punishment apo ee oru learning ee operant conditioning la it is it was proposed by skinner b f skinner and this type of learning here also it is also we can say that operant conditioning it is also a method of learning and this type of particular learning occurs through rewards and punishment for behavior so namukku oru oru stimulus vannu we are behaving in a particular way and for that behavior um, some type of learning occurs because uh, occurs through rewards or punishment so we can say that through operant conditioning an association is made between the behavior and a consequence for that behavior appa ee or particular behavior la the important thing is that some type of association association happens or uh, bit uh, um, some type of association it is made between the behavior and a consequence for that behavior so i'll make it clear before that uh, who is the father of operant conditioning b f skinner this person b f skinner is regarded as the father of operant conditioning and 
Skinner studied operant conditioning by conducting experiments using animals. Just like Pavlov also. Pavlov conducted his experiment with the help of a dog. Similarly, B.F. Skinner, uh, he also conducted uh, or he studied the uh, operant conditioning by conducting experiments using animals. And for this, he used uh, one a box called the Skinner box. This is very important, Skinner box. He used the box called the Skinner box for his experiment. Pitre Manslaya, Bakin and Parnera, E Association of Kenya Vernina, E experiment Parnirima Manslao. Upper Skinner is BF Skinner is regarded as the father of operant conditioning, and Skinner studied operant conditioning by conducting experiments using animal. Um, <clears throat> then uh, next is uh, what what is Skinner box? He conducted his experiment with the help of this apparatus called the Skinner box. And now let us look what is, what that experiment is. So you know that uh, what is the name of that apparatus? Skinner box. The Skinner box which is an experiment conducted. So the experiment is that inside the Skinner box. Uh, and as I mentioned that uh, Skinner studied the operant conditioning uh, with the help of an animal and he used the rat for his experiment. But Pavlov dog in and you say that the here Skinner used a rat for his experiment. So inside the Skinner box, when the rat uh, the rat was placed, first of all, the rat was placed inside the Skinner box. And the Skinner box consists of two buttons, one blue button and one red button. But hmm? Skinner box is rat in a it too, organization. He Skinner box is a red button. One is a blue button and the other is, other is red button. So inside the Skinner box, when the rat presses a blue button, what happens? The rat receives a foot pellet as a reward. Apo, red button on the blue button on the red button on the when the rat presses the blue button, the rat will get a foot pellet pellet. Hmm? Foot pellet and we can consider it as a reward. Apo, rat and then a blue button press in the summit rat in a foot pellet. Hmm? We can call it as a reward. A leper rat in a pet and the vision that can or a rat and the dingy blue button press in a pellet foot pellet to get umba. The rat consider it as a reward. But on the other hand, when the rat presses the red button, it receives a mild electric shock. A per rat to red button press in the summit and then a richer electric shock. Then what will be the result? For ratina, if uh, uh, in the uh, red button, blue button, and they don't know ratina real. But accidentally, when rat presses the blue button, it will get a foot pellet. But uh, when it presses the uh, by accident, it, uh, accidentally it presses the blue, uh, sorry, red button, what happens? It gets a mild electric shock. That was what happened. Mm? Uh, then what is the result? Now let us examine what happened or what is the result. The rat learns to press the blue button to get the reward. electric shock it is an unpleasant experience. So gradually the rat learned that um, when it presses the blue button, it will definitely get a reward. Also, at the same time, it learns to avoid the red button because getting or uh, is getting a, an electric shock means it is an unpleasant uh, experience or it is it might be a little bit painful so that it can stay away from the shock. Gradually, the rat learns to avoid the red button in the manner so that it can stay away from the electric shock. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Pav, sorry, not Pavlov, Skinner. He used the Skinner box to conduct the experiment and he used which animal? Which animal for his experiment? Rat. 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 
റാറ്റിനാണ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇതൊക്കെ സാധാരണ ഈ എൻ സി ക്യൂല് ചോദിക്കാറുണ്ട് സ്കിന്നർ ഏത് ആനിമലിനാണ് യൂസ് ചെയ്തത് പാവ്ലോവിന്റെ പിന്നെ എല്ലാവർക്കും അറിയാം പക്ഷെ നമ്മൾ സ്കിന്നറിന്റെ എഴുതുമ്പോൾ ചിലപ്പോൾ മാറാറുണ്ട് പലർക്കും അപ്പോൾ ഇതാണ് എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് അപ്പൊ സ്കിന്നർ ബോക്സിൽ രണ്ട് ബട്ടൺ ആണുള്ള റെഡ് ആൻഡ് ബ്ലൂ ബട്ടൺ റെഡ് ബട്ടൺ പ്രസ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ എന്താണ് ദ റാറ്റ് റിസീവ്സ് എ മൈൽഡ് ഇലക്ട്രിക് ഷോക്ക് മറ്റേ ബ്ലൂ ബട്ടൺ ആണെങ്കിൽ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ആസ് എ ഗെറ്റ് ഗെറ്റ് എ ഫുഡ് പെല്ലറ്റ് അപ്പൊ ഈ ഫുഡ് പെല്ലറ്റ് കിട്ടുക എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ പ്ലഷറബിൾ എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് റാറ്റ് കൺസിഡർ ഇറ്റ് ആസ് എ റിവാർഡ് അപ്പൊ ഇങ്ങനെ പലപ്പോഴും ആക്സിഡന്റ്ലി ഇതിനകത്ത് പ്രസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന സമയത്ത് റെഡ് പ്രസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന സമയത്തായിരിക്കും ചിലപ്പോൾ ഒരു ഷോക്ക് കിട്ടുന്നത് അപ്പൊ എന്താണ് ഗ്രാജുവലി ഇറ്റ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് അസോസിയേറ്റി റെഡ് റെഡ് ബട്ടൺ പ്രസ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഷോക്ക് കിട്ടും അത് പെയിൻഫുൾ ആണ് അങ്ങനെ പതുക്കെ അത് അസോസിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ തുടങ്ങും സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ സ്റ്റേ എവേ ഫ്രം ദാറ്റ് തിങ് അപ്പൊ ദിസ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് അസോസിയേറ്റീവ് ലേണിങ് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ആൻഡ് ഇവിടെ വേറെ രണ്ട് കാര്യങ്ങൾ പറയാനുള്ളത് അസോസിയേറ്റീവ് ലേണിങ് അസോസിയേറ്റീവ് ലേണിങ് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ആൻഡ് അറ്റ് ദ സെയിം ടൈം സ്ട്രെങ്തനിങ് ഓഫ് ബിഹേവിയർ ഇത് രണ്ടും എന്താന്ന് മനസ്സിലായോ അസോസിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ തുടങ്ങി ഞാൻ ആ റെഡ് സോറി ബ്ലൂ ബട്ടൺ പ്രസ് ചെയ്താൽ എനിക്ക് ഫുഡ് കിട്ടുള്ളൂ അത് പതുക്കെ പഠിക്കാൻ തുടങ്ങി അതേ സമയത്ത് റെഡ് ബട്ടൺ പ്രസ് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഐ റിസീവ് ദ ഷോക്ക് ഇങ്ങനെ റാറ്റ് പഠിക്കാൻ തുടങ്ങി സോ വി ക്യാൻ കോൾ ഇറ്റ് എസ് എൻ അസോസിയേറ്റീവ് ലേണിംഗ് ഇറ്റ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് അസോസിയേറ്റിംഗ് ദെൻ അറ്റ് ദ സെയിം ടൈം സ്ട്രെങ്തനിങ് ഓഫ് ബിഹേവിയർ ഓൾസോ ഹാപ്പൺ എന്താണ് സ്ട്രെങ്തനിങ് ഓഫ് ബിഹേവിയർ ബ്ലൂ ബട്ടൺ പ്രസ് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഐ വിൽ റിസീവ് ദ ഫുഡ് പെല്ലറ്റ് അപ്പൊ ആ ഒരു ബിഹേവിയർ ആ റെഡ് ബ്ലൂ ബട്ടൺ പ്രസ് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള ആ ഒരു ബിഹേവിയർ അവിടെ പതുക്കെ സ്ട്രെങ്തൻ ചെയ്തു സോ വി ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് ഓപ്പറേറ്റ് കണ്ടീഷനിങ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് അസോസിയേറ്റീവ് ലേണിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ വി ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് സ്ട്രെങ്തനിങ് ഓഫ് ബിഹേവിയർ ഹാപ്പൻസ് ഇയർ ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ദ റിവാർഡ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് മോഡിഫൈഡ് ബൈ സെർട്ടൻ ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് റീ എൻഫോഴ്സ്മെന്റ് അപ്പൊ ഈ ഹോപ്പ് ദ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് ഇസ് ക്ലിയർ ടു യു ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ദിസ് എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് റീ എൻഫോഴ്സ്മെന്റ് ആൻഡ് പണിഷ്മെന്റ് ടേക്സ് പ്ലേസ് ദീസ് ആർ ദ ടു ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ് ടേംസ് അസോസിയേറ്റഡ് വിത്ത് ഓപ്പറൻറ്റ് കണ്ടീഷനിങ് സോ വട്ട് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് റീ എൻഫോഴ്സ്മെന്റ് ആൻഡ് പണിഷ്മെന്റ് സോ ഇൻ ദിസ് എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് വോട്ട് ഇസ് ദ റീ എൻഫോഴ്സർ വോട്ട് ഇസ് ദ റീ എൻഫോഴ്സർ Yes, food is the reinforcer. And then what is the punishment? Punishment in the parana, that is the electric shock. So we can say that operant conditioning, it is a type of associative learning process. It's better you just write down. This is an important sentence, uh, important point. You please write it down. Operant conditioning, operant conditioning is a type of, is a type of, associative associative learning process associative learning process through which through which the strength of a behavior the strength of a behavior is modified is modified by is modified by reinforcement is modified by reinforcement or punishment or punishment so operant conditioning it is a type of associative learning process it's a learning process and this uh, occurs or this uh, process through which the strength of a behavior is modified by reinforcement or punishment and we can say that this operant conditioning it is also referred to as instrumental conditioning hmm? instrumental conditioning na vera oru peru und operant conditioning it is also called the uh, instrumental conditioning 
this, we can say that it is a method uh, of learning that occurs through rewards and punishment for behavior. For a particular behavior, strength and chain and then again, other it is associated with the reward as well as punishment. Hmm? Operant conditioning. Then, when we talk about the components of operant conditioning, what are the components? Reinforcement and punishment. They are considered as the uh, main components of operant conditioning. Then, what is called a reinforcement? Any next is reinforcement. What is reinforcement? So, in cycling, giving reward. Giving. Any kind of stimuli which uh, improve, uh, which strengthens or increases, yes, that is called the reinforcement. So reinforcement, uh, if you want, um, means notes that I will dictate it. You can write it down. So if you want, so reinforcement. If you need, you need the definition for reinforcement. Simple definition. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Yes. yes, then write it down. Reinforcement, reinforcement is any stimulus, is any stimulus that strengthens, that strengthens or increases or increases the probability, the probability of a probability of a specific response probability of a specific response by your definition why what is reinforcement the men's love the pen and parayan kaya the nature you reinforcement and punishment to cover everything korchi confusion on the gun at the chances on the other this is a reinforcement is anything that strengthens or increases the probability of a particular behavior. And when we talk about a reinforcement, there are two types of reinforcement. One is positive reinforcement and the other is negative reinforcement. One is positive reinforcement and other is negative reinforcement. Then now let us look what a positive reinforcement. Hmm? Positive reinforcement means, write down, positive reinforcers are, positive reinforcers are favorable events, are favorable events or outcomes or outcomes that are presented, that are presented after the behavior. A positive reinforcement that are favorable events or outcomes that are presented after the behavior. That means, um, for example, if you do a good job at your workplace, then your manager gives you a bonus. That is an example for Positive reinforces. Upon Ningal and Ningal, that Jolie Sultan and Night on the work, Kedu, Nanlu performance a culture which you then what happens? The manager recognizes uh, that your work and he gives you a bonus. So that is a positive reinforcement. Upper uh, that uh, uh, example also you please note it down, otherwise you will become confused. But positive reinforces no Chandana, they are the favorable events or outcome that are presented after the behavior. Upper after the behavior, after with a particular behavior, and then, nallari idile, nengalu worki idu. Apan then, manager adu oru consider idu. That he is giving you a bonus, so that is a positive reinforcement. Then, coming to negative reinforcement, you please write down negative reinforcement. Here, a response or behavior, a response negative reinforces a response or behavior is strengthened is strengthened by stopping by stopping comma removing removing or avoiding or avoiding a negative outcome 
a negative outcome or aversive stimuli a negative outcome or aversive stimuli so here what happens a particular behavior is strengthened by stopping or removing or avoiding a negative outcome or aversive stimuli i'll give you an example uh, removing restrictions from a child when she follows the rule is an example of negative reinforcement appo oru kutti ipo endengil oru undesirable aayittu endengil oru behavior exhibit cheyana അപ്പൊ അതിന് അതിന് അപ്പൊ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ എല്ലാ ദിവസവും സ്കൂളിൽ പോകാൻ നേരത്ത് കരയാണ് കരയുന്ന കാരണം കുട്ടിയുടെ മദർ പറയാണ് എല്ലാ ദിവസവും രാവിലെ സ്കൂളിൽ പോകാൻ നേരത്ത് കരയുന്ന കാരണം എന്താണ് വൈകുന്നേരം വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഇനി തൊട്ട് ഞാൻ ടി വി കാണിക്കില്ല അങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഒരു പണിഷ്മെന്റ് അവിടെ കൊടുക്കുകയാണ് പക്ഷെ കുറച്ചു ദിവസം കഴിഞ്ഞ് കഴിഞ്ഞപ്പോ കുട്ടി കുട്ടി കരയണോ അപ്പൊ കുട്ടിക്ക് മനസ്സിലായി ഞാൻ കരയണ കാരണം എന്നെ ഇവിടെ ടി വി കാണിക്കാൻ സമ്മതിക്കില്ല വൈകുന്നേരം വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് ഗ്രാജുവലി ഈ കുട്ടി പഠിക്കുകയാണ് ഇനി കരഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഒരു രക്ഷയില്ല അത് കാരണം കുട്ടി കരച്ചിൽ പതുക്കെ നിർത്തി അപ്പൊ എന്താണ് ആ റെസ്ട്രിക്ഷൻ ആ ടി വി കാണിക്കില്ല എന്നുള്ള ആ ഒരു റെസ്ട്രിക്ഷൻ അങ്ങ് മാറ്റി മാറ്റുവാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വി കോൺ ദാറ്റ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് reinforcer we call as a negative reinforcer app here endana her response or behavior is strengthened by stopping or uh, avoiding a negative outcome or aversive stimuli is it clear so you can write down the example removing removing restrictions from a child removing restrictions from a child when she when she follows the rule and she follows the rule is an example of is an example of negative reinforcement so we can say that uh, from uh, when we go through the positive reinforcers and negative re reinforcement behavior increases reinforcement behavior it is gradually increasing so when we talk about the reinforcer a reinforcer what do you mean by a reinforcer reinforcer is a what is reinforcer a reinforcement means any stimulus that strengthens or increases the probability of a specific response and there are two different types of reinforcers the one is positive reinforcer and the other is the negative reinforcer so in when uh, what is positive reinforcer positive reinforcer means it is any are uh, positive reinforcers are any favorable events or outcomes that are presented after the behavior അപ്പൊ അതിന് നിങ്ങൾ ഇത് ഓരോന്ന് പഠിക്കുമ്പോഴും ജസ്റ്റ് യു ജസ്റ്റ് കീപ്പ് ഇൻ യുവർ മൈൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് എക്സാമ്പിൾ സോ ഇഫ് യു ഡു എ ഗുഡ് ജോബ് അറ്റ് യുവർ വർക്ക് പ്ലേസ് യുവർ മാനേജർ ഗീവ്സ് യുവർ ബോണസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എൻ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഫോർ പോസിറ്റീവ് റീൻഫോഴ്സ് ദെറ്റ് വെൻ വി ടോക്ക് അബൌട്ട് ദ നെഗറ്റീവ് റീൻഫോഴ്സ് ഹിയർ വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ദ റെസ്പോൺസ് ഓർ എ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ബിഹേവിയർ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് സ്ട്രെങ്തൻഡ് ബൈ സ്റ്റോപ്പിംഗ് ഓർ സംടൈംസ് റിമൂവിംഗ് ഓർ ബൈ അവോയ്ഡിംഗ് എ നെഗറ്റീവ് ഔട്ട്കം or aversive stimuli that means uh, removing uh, restrictions from a child when she follows the rule is an example of negative reinforcement then next is uh, hope it is clear reinforcement is it clear idu ningala textbook il nokki kaniyenna ottri examples allengil google onnu google edeyna ottri examples kaanu so it it is easy a example la kodi poi kaniyenna the definition it will be uh, more easy then next is shall i move to the next punishment yes, yes. next is punishment when we talk about the punishment it is a very uh, commonly used term hmm? uh, what is punishment hmm? punishment is the you can write the definition punishment is the presentation of punishment is the presentation of an adver adverse presentation of an adverse event or outcome adverse event or outcome that 
causes a decrease in the behavior that causes a decrease in the behavior a positive uh, sorry reinforces leppum a positive whether it is positive reinforcer or negative reinforcer in both cases the reinforcement behavior increases but when we talk about the punishment uh, here what happens it is the presentation of an adverse event or outcome that causes a decrease in behavior and similarly just like a reinforces also positive reinforcement sorry positive punishment is the negative punishment is the so write down that there are different types of punishment first is positive punishment and the other is negative punishment so now let us look a positive punishment positive punishment is positive punishment is decreasing the rate of any decreasing the rate of any undesired behavior undesired behavior from an individual so a particular undesirable aitulla if some undesirable behavior is there we are trying to remove that behavior or trying to uh, decrease that particular behavior for example uh, slapping a child uh, when the child throws a tantrum ipo hmm? bayangara shabda undaki behlo undaki kareyanunnundengil or adi kodukkuvanengil that is a positive reinforcement sorry positive punishment hmm? apo um, uh, positive uh, punishment is decreasing the rate of any undesired behavior from an individual here also presenting a negative consequence after an undesired behavior hmm? apo presenting a negative consequence or giving a negative consequence after an undesired behavior hmm? uh, for example example also you can write down slapping a child slapping a child when when the child when the child shows or throws a tantrum t a n t r u m when the child throws a tantrum so that is a that is an example for positive punishment the next is negative punishment negative punishment it focuses on negative punishment focuses on decreasing decreasing the rate of the rate of any undesired behavior any undesired behavior from an individual from an individual if when you go through the definition of positive reinforce positive punishment and negative punishment it seems same hmm? but there is slight difference negative punishment means it focuses on decreasing the rate of any undesired behavior from an individual for example something good is taken away that this also you can write down something good something good is being is being taken away is being taken away as a result of as a result of the individuals of the individuals undesired behavior of individuals undesired behavior uh, for example you can write this example taking away taking away a child's a child's video game video game following following misbehavior following misbehavior this usually 
ഹാപ്പൻസ് ഇൻ അവർ ഹോം അല്ലെ നമ്മളിപ്പോ കുട്ടികള് എക്സാമിന് മാർക്ക് കുറഞ്ഞു ഉടനെ നമ്മൾ എന്താ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇനി ടി വി കാണിക്കില്ല അല്ലെങ്കിൽ മൊബൈല് തരില്ല ഇങ്ങനത്തെ വി മേക്ക് സോ മെനി റെസ്ട്രിക്ഷൻസ് സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എ നെഗറ്റീവ് പണിഷ്മെന്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ദ ചൈൽഡ് സ്കോർഡ് ലെസ് മാർക്ക് ഇൻ ദ എക്സാം ആൻഡ് ഫോളോയിങ് ദാറ്റ് വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് വാട്ട് വിൽ ബി വാട്ട് ദ പേരൻസ് യൂഷ്വലി ഡു ദേ റെസ്ട്രിക്ട് സെർട്ടൻ തിങ്സ് so that is a negative re- a negative punishment so these are the different types of punishment so first is um, when we talk about the operant conditioning uh, um what are the things mainly you have to uh, study the rewards and punish uh, punishment what the, what is the association how the association is formed and we can say that when we talk about the theories of personality the uh, in this way our behavior certain types of behavior are strengthened in a person and this uh, definitely we know that it affects the personality hmm? uh, so this is all about the personality that is uh, about the rewards and punishment okay then uh, one more uh, theory is the that is called the law of effect law of effect so law of effect who this uh, the skinner's theory it is called the operant conditioning yel thrombic thrombic operant conditioning skinner then any law of effect it was it is by thrombic this is also very important thrombic Hmm? any idea about that law law of effect the law of effect it was first proposed by uh, thorndike the ed, uh, full name is edward thorndike and thorndike suggested that if a situation is followed by satisfaction then there are more chances to reoccur that behavior manslayo if a situation is followed by sat- uh, satisfaction so when we uh, perform a certain type of behavior and definitely some consequence will be there and if the consequence is uh, very pleasant or favorable then what happens then there are more chances to reoccur that behavior we all know that ipo uh, suppose uh, if we touch a hot object suddenly we withdraw withdraw our hand why because uh, touching a hot object means it is not a pleasant thing it is slightly painful so what happens so we want uh, the, that uh, there are more chances to uh, there are less chances to reoccur that particular behavior that means touching a hot object but on the other hand if a situation is followed by discomfort that is what i mentioned that is if a situation is followed by discomfort the connections to the situation will become weaker and the behavior of response is less likely to occur when the situation is repeated so these two points you can write down law of effect the first point first point are you writing yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay right uh, please note down yes ma'am if a situation is followed by if a situation is followed by satisfaction satisfaction comma then then there are more chances then there are more chances to reoccur to reoccur that behavior reoccur that behavior next point if the situation if the situation is followed is followed by discomfort by dis- followed by discomfort the connections to the situations the connections to the situations will become weaker will become weaker and the behavior and the behavior or response is less likely to is less likely to occur occur when the situation is 
when the situation is repeated. Hmm? Then I'll give you an example. Suppose if an employee arrived early to work for one day by accident, by accidentally he came early in the office, then uh, the boss notices and praises his diligence. Okay, so this praise make the employee to feel good and it reinforces the behavior and he start coming to work early. And like, or a, or a, by accidentally, near um, the office, and the boss notices it, and he makes a praise for his uh, diligence. Upon that, some people can say this praise makes the employee feel good, and it acts as a reinforcer for that particular behavior. Any behavior, na all those near the area, and all our behavior, na it acts as a this uh, the praise of the uh, employer. Acts as a reinforcer, and thus he start coming to work early every day. That is one example. Uh, then the next example is suppose uh, when you ride a bike and uh, you disobey the traffic rule, and if you receive a penalty, then what will be your behavior? Then you will be less likely to disobey the traffic rules in the future. If a bike or chipu and a helmet is compulsory nowadays. Upper suppose if you're not wearing the helmet, a whatever traffic police put you fine at you penalty could condi one. Pinna next time home and the alum you won't forget to take the helmet. Adana. Then uh, that means here the behavior. It is, uh, or uh, then you will be less likely to disobey the traffic rules in the uh, future. A power behavior look change where you want to change another. So, other than our end points, first is if the, a situation is followed by satisfaction, then there are more chances to reoccur. A power particular situation that is uh, coming to the office early. That, uh, and the uh, employee gets praise from the boss. That is followed by satisfaction. That is followed by satisfaction means uh, he gets the praise. So then there are more chances to reoccur that behavior. But in the second situation, what happens? It is followed by discomfort. So you are traveling without wearing a helmet. Then what happens? Then you get a penalty. Then what will be the uh, consequence? Then the situation you uh, try or that particular behavior or, or response is less likely to occur. You won't repeat that. So that is called the law of effect. So here also some connections happen between the situation and the behavior. Some connections are happening between the situations and the behavior. Similarly, just like uh, Skinner and Pavlov also, Tondek also conducted um, various uh, various experiments and one uh, experiment the famous experiment he for that for that he used the puzzle box puzzle box it was used by whom tondek and uh, this puzzle box it consists of a small lever inside <coughs> so these levers one minute these levers when pressed would allow the animal to escape okay puzzle box just like uh, um, skinner box there was two buttons blue button uh, and red button but in the puzzle box by Tontek, there is there are there are uh, small levers inside the puzzle box uh, then the uh, and he used a cat um, for his experiment and Tontek placed a cat inside the puzzle box and then placed a piece of meat outside the box and slayo upper puzzle box a lever under uh, and he used the cat for his experiment uh, in, initially he placed the cat inside the puzzle box and after that and then uh, he placed a piece of meat outside the box and he observed the cat's efforts to escape and obtain food 
അപ്പൊ ഒരു ഹംഗ്രി ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു കാറ്റിനെ പസിൽ ബോക്സിൽ ഇട്ടു എന്നിട്ട് കൂടിന്റെ പുറത്താണ് ഈ മീറ്റ് വെച്ചത് അപ്പൊ എന്നിട്ട് ഹി ഒബ്സേർവ് ദ കാറ്റ്സ് ഇഫോർട്ട് ടു എസ്കേപ്പ് ഫ്രം ദ ബോക്സ് എസ്കേപ്പ് ഫ്രം ദ ബോക്സ് അറ്റ് ദ സെയിം ടൈം ദ കാറ്റ് ഓൾസോ ട്രൈ ടു ഒബ്ടെയിൻ ദ ഫുഡ് ആൻഡ് ഹി റെക്കോർഡഡ് ഹൗ ലോങ് ഈച്ച് ആനിമൽ ടു കിറ്റ് ഫ്രീ Uh, how long each animal uh, takes the time to free itself from the box so oru animal etra time a porthekku povanayittu edukkunnalladhu he observed in between eventually the cat happened to press the lever and the door opened and it could receive the reward what is the reward meat is the reward by accidentally the cat presses the lever and what happened the door opened and the uh, cat Uh, it went outside and he could also receive the reward even though the first pressing uh, the pressing of the lever it occurred simply by accident the cat became likely to repeat it because they had received reward immediately after performing the action okay some connection connectionism happens here so the thondike observed that with each trial the cat become much faster in opening the door and this happens because while pressing the lever the cat receives the reward what is the reward meat hmm? and which is a favorable outcome and this makes the cat to repeat the behavior and idana i experiment appa puzzle box inde ullile it contains few levers and the cat was placed inside the uh, puzzle box and accidentally when the cat presses the lever what happened the door opened so that he can it can go outside and it could get the meat then pindi inda palla thavana repeat cheyina samayath endana gradually that learning of a particular behavior happens and the cat uh, also start associating some connectionism happens here what is that connectionism because when i if the the cat uh, learn that if it presses the lever the door will open so that it could be able to go outside and at the same time it will get the food so this happens because um, uh, and um, so here also the strengthening of that particular behavior happens because uh, what is the outcome it was a favorable outcome and this because of this favorable outcome what happens this makes the cat to repeat that particular behavior and thontek uh, termed this as law of effect and here he suggested that when satisfaction follows an association it is more likely to be repeat so i i gave you two uh, points in the beginning of this uh, law of effect that is first is what is the first one it is a satisfaction is followed by mm. it is a situation is followed by satisfaction then mm. there are no chance to reoccur that behavior we reoccur that behavior so uh, he uh, in this way with this experiment he <clears throat> proved the um, Sit, uh, that are both two statements is it clear but on the other hand if an unfavorable outcome follows an action then it becomes less likely to be repeated so the t- key two key aspects of law of effect that is behavior immediately followed by favorable consequences are more likely to occur again and other is the behavior followed by unfavorable consequences are less likely to occur again okay is it clear so this is called the law of effect then uh, i had gone through the observational learning no do you remember observational learning padipicha ellarunno did i observe no. പഠിപ്പിച്ചില്ല സോ ഒബ്സർവേഷൻ വാട്ട് ഈസ് ഒബ്സർവേഷണൽ ലേണിംഗ് ഒബ്സർവേഷണൽ ലേണിംഗ് മീൻസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ലേണിംഗ് ദാറ്റ് ഒക്കേഴ്സ് ത്രൂ ഒബ്സർവിംഗ് ദ ബിഹേവിയർ ഓഫ് അതേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് വി ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എ ഫോം ഓഫ് സോഷ്യൽ ലേണിംഗ് ഇറ്റ് കംസ് അണ്ടർ സോഷ്യൽ ലേണിംഗ് ഇത് ഐ തിങ്ക് ഐ ഹാഡ് ഓൾറെഡി ടേക്കൺ ദിസ് ഒബ്സർവേഷണൽ യെസ് മാം ബൈ ആൽബർട്ട് ബണ്ടൂര yes ma'am yes already yes, 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 yes. so what are the processes involved in observational learning observational learning watching watching, 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 watching,
then after that we are retaining the observation and we try to replicate the behavior that that were observed so these are the process and observational learning it is also called the modeling or what are the other names vicarious learning shaping observational learning in in, in, in names like that are you and it is proposed by albert bandura okay so next we will move to the other theory it is about the karen horney's theory of uh, neurotic needs or the karen horney's uh, theory of personality we can say that the karen horney's theory of uh, personality and actually this uh, theory it is uh, it was a neo freud she uh, the karen horney uh, karen horney it is it is pronounced as uh, karen horney h o r to r n e y so it is in e y e karen horney okay it is it is pronounced as karen horney so karen horney's theory of personality and we know that uh, uh, karen horney she was a neo freudian psychologist neo freudian psychologist what is the freud's theory of psychology hmm namlu personality le padichanalla what what that uh, psycho Freud's theory, psychoanalytic theory. Psychoanalytic theory. Psychoanalytic What are the compon com components of psychoanalytic theory? Three components: id, ego, super ego. Then, what are the different stages of psychoanalytic theory? Do you remember that? Oral stage, anal, 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 phallic, 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 phallic stage, phallic stage, phallic stage, latency. ോട്ടിക്സ്റ്റിക്സ്റ്റിക്സ്റ്റിക്സ്റ്റിക്സ്റ്റിക്സ്റ്റിക്സ്റ്റിക്സ്റ്റിക്സ്റ്റിക്സ
so he she in the in this theory karen horney in her theory of uh, neurotic niche she emphasized on neurosis and according to her this neurosis it results from basic anxiety and how this basic anxiety occur this basic anxiety it is caused by interpersonal relationship okay it's caused by interpersonal relationship so according to horney the basic anxiety could result from a variety of situations so it, when we talk about the interpersonal relationship interpersonal relationship we have to come across with various situations so karen horney uh, she says that uh, basic anxiety it could result from a variety of situations that it can be sometimes uh, some direct uh, direct relationship or some indirect relationship uh, so um, for example Uh, some erratic behavior from uh, parents mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, the um, human beings we all are social animals so it is very necessary for us to interact with each and everyone around us അല്ലെ നമ്മളുടെ ചുറ്റും ഒത്തിരി ആൾക്കാരുണ്ട് ഇവരൊക്കെ ആയിട്ട് നമുക്ക് ഡെയിലി ബേസിസിൽ നമുക്ക് ഒരു രീതിയിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വേറൊരു രീതിയിൽ വി ഹാവ് ടു ഇന്ററാക്ട് ഇവിടെ ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ മാത്രമല്ല വി ഹാവ് ടു കം അക്രോസ് വിത്ത് വേരിയസ് ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് ഡീലിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് എനി unhappiness or uh, if uh, some erratic behavior happens from the other side no it will affect the um, hu human behavior or it will affect the condition of the uh, human being that is some erratic behavior or some lack of respect and uh, when we talk about the child during the uh, developmental phase of the child the child has to get emotional warmth uh, then care love all those things from the caregiver or from the we can say that from the parents if the lack of respect or uh, some of the basic uh, needs of the child are not satisfied it creates some sort of anxiety in the child similarly in the grown up people also um, certain types of um, what to say erratic behavior then um, and uh, or if uh, continuous conflict in the family അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ഫോൾട്ടി ഇൻ്റർപേഴ്സണൽ റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ബെറ്റർ ടു സേ ദ ഫോൾട്ടി ഇൻ്റർപേഴ്സണൽ റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ദെൻ വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ഇറ്റ് ലീഡ്സ് ടു ന്യൂറോസിസ് ഓർ ആൻസൈറ്റി ദറ്റ് ഈസ് വാട്ട് Uh, karen horne emphasized in her theory uh, then usually it might be some uh, types of direct or indirect domination then indifference in the i'm talking about the various uh, factors of the interpersonal relationship so the direct or indirect domination then some sort of indifference as i mentioned erratic behavior then uh, lack of respect of the child for the child's needs then uh, lack of emotional warmth that is very important if that lacks again it, it may it may be to um, anxiety then lack of guidance during the developmental phase then uh, too much co parental conflict or disagreement then in some cases the children are very overprotective hmm, by the parents then again it may cause some sort of anxiety then some discrimination or sibling rivalry uh, all the, if such things happens in the interpersonal relationship it may affect the uh, personality of the individual that means it will lead to these type of behavior um, which occur in the interpersonal relationship it lead to the basic anxiety and finally it leads to a neurotic behavior and uh, the karen horney she identified 10 neurotic needs how many 10 neurotic needs are identified cheyidha and these 10 neurotic needs are classified into three broad categories these 10 neurotic needs are categorized into three broad, broad categories these are the three broad, broad categories so how many neurotic needs did uh, neurotic needs did uh, karen honey identified 10 10 and uh, and well. she minimized or she classified it into three broad categories okay, okay. <clears throat> so first is the need to move you towards others so these terms are very important italics le tekna these terms are very important needs that moves you towards others 
needs that move you away from others needs that move you against others here towards away against others these are very important so now let us uh, go through uh, first one that is need that move you towards others because of this need the individual seek affirmation and acceptance from others so it is a need here um, karen honey she identified the need the need that it is very essential for the life so because as this need is dominant and or because of this need the individual seek affirmation and accept acceptance from others namala so, do you remember this hmm you read that part so or kind of here also we um, i mentioned about the basic needs hmm this is the basic need here also uh, in this here hmm do you remember this need self esteem confidence achievement respect to others as well as respect by others so it is considered as a need so similarly in this theory also karen horne she identified the uh, need that moves you towards other here she uh, focused on the need the individual seek that is uh, the mainly the need like affirmation and acceptance from others that is people always exhibit a tendency to uh, be needy as well as clingy hmm? Uh, we always have a tendency to cling to others they this they seek and approve seek out approval and love that is called the need that moves to moves you towards others nammala baaki ullorude edthekku move cheynadhu endinana because uh, we want to be a part in the community our social group le we want to be a, a member of that particular group and at the same time we 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 are uh, seeking affirmation as well as acceptance from others that means uh, we always exhibit a tendency to uh, be a part of the group and uh, we feel we often have a tendency tendency <clears throat> to get accepted by others appa aga or approval baaki ullorin or approval at the same time we try to seek approval as well as love from others hmm? that is a, an important need that is called the need that move you towards others towards uh, towards is very important is it clear <coughs> clear yes ma'am yes ma'am അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഒരു ഗ്രൂപ്പിലെ മെമ്പർ ആകണമെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് എപ്പോഴും അക്സെപ്റ്റൻസ് വേണം ആ ഗ്രൂപ്പിൽ നിന്ന് ബാക്കിയുള്ളവർ റെക്കഗ്നൈസ് ചെയ്യണം ആ ഒരു ഇതിന് വേണ്ടിട്ട് വി മൂവ് ടുവേർഡ്സ് ടുവേർഡ്സ് അതേഴ്സ് ദറ്റ് ഈസ് കോൾ ദ നീഡ് ദാറ്റ് മൂവ്സ് യു ടുവേർഡ്സ് അതേഴ്സ് സോ ഹിയർ വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദ നീഡ് നീഡ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാണ് വി ആർ സീക്കിംഗ് ഫോർ അഫർമേഷൻ ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് അക്സെപ്റ്റൻസ് വി വോണ്ട് ടു ബി എ മെമ്പർ ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ നീഡ് മെൻഷൻ ഹിയർ ഇൻ ദിസ് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ആസ്പെക്ട് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ നീഡ്സ് ദാറ്റ് മൂവ് യു ടുവേർഡ്സ് അതേഴ്സ് ദെൻ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഈസ് ദ നീഡ്സ് ദാറ്റ് മൂവ് യു എവേ ഫ്രം അതേഴ്സ് എന്താണ് വോട്ട് ആർ ദ നീഡ്സ് ദാറ്റ് മൂവ് യു എവേ ഫ്രം അതേഴ്സ് ഹിയർ ഓൾസോ വി ഹാവ് ടു സേ Uh, the needs that move you away from others in the context of the neurotic needs so this neurotic needs creates hostility and anti social behavior so these type of individuals are often described as called indifferent aloof etc ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ പറയാറുണ്ട് ഒരു ഇൻട്രോവേർട്ട് ആ ഇൻട്രോവേർട്ടിന്റെ കുറെ ഒരു എക്സ്ട്രീം കേസിലേക്ക് പോയി കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ദേ ആർ യൂഷ്വലി വിഡ്രോൺ ഫ്രം ദ സൊസൈറ്റി ദേ ഡസിൻ ലൈക്ക് ടു ബി ആസ് എ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ദേ ഓൾവേസ് പ്രിഫർ ടു ബി എലോൺ ഓക്കെ സിമിലർലി വി ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് ദീസ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് പീപ്പിൾ ദേ ആർ ഇൻഡിഫറെന്റ് ആൻഡ് ദേ ആർ ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ്ഡ് ആസ് കോൾഡ് called in the sense they are not that much active so the neurotic need this type of need creates hostility angana ullo or edutha endanu chela create some sort of hostility as well as anti social behavior appo ee or characteristic la ulla aalkar endanu they are uh, they create some sort of hostility among others and at the same time they have a tendency to exhibit some sort of unsocial behavior uh, and sorry anti social behavior 
so that is called the need that move away from others apa avarile hostility they are little bit indifferent they prefers to be sit alone uh, uh, they doesn't want to be a member of a particular group so what happens It, this type of behavior creates hostility among others and all and we can say that to some extent they be, uh, exhibit some sort of anti social behavior so because of this reason then we can say that the need that move you away from others appa ingena ingena thoru preference varumba we have a tendency to move away from others okay that is the second then the third is the need that move you against others this need result in hostility at the same time and a need to control other people here also hostility will be the but at the same time they have a tendency uh, or a need to control other people you that tendency in alladilum kudalayite use cheyana term that is need they have a need to control other people that means they are little bit dominant and these people are described as difficult it is very difficult to get along with these people and at the same time they are dominating they are dominant figures and to some extent they are unkind so these are the characteristics described by karen horne uh, in the third type they are hostility will be the uh, they have a need to control other people thus uh, these people can be described as difficult domineering and unkind so these are the three uh, needs identified by Uh, actually karen horne she identified 10 neurotic needs and these 10 neurotic needs are classified into three broad categories these are the three broad categories that needs that move you towards others needs that move you away from others and needs that move you against others then the karen horne's uh, theory of neurotic needs in her uh, book on self analysis horne outlined the 10 neurotic needs she had identified the need for affection and approval the new, uh, neurotic need for a partner who will take over one's life then the neurotic need to restrict one's life within narrow borders and the neurotic need for power the neurotic need to exploit others the neurotic need for prestige the neurotic need for personal admiration the person neurotic need for personal achievement neurotic need for self sufficiency and independence the neurotic need for perfection and unassailability i see ma'am okay apo it is said that this uh, neurotic people often utilize two or more of this ways of coping and create e idinatha ipo neurotic means സാധാരണ ന്യൂറോട്ടിക് ആൾക്കാർ ഈ മൂന്ന് ഇതിനകത്ത് ഏതെങ്കിലും അറ്റ്ലീസ്റ്റ് രണ്ടെണ്ണെങ്കിൽ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നതാണ് പറയുന്നത് സോ ബട്ട് എ വെൽ അഡ്ജസ്റ്റഡ് ഇൻഡിവിജ്വൽ യൂട്ടിലൈസ് ഓൾ ദ ത്രീ ഓഫ് ദ സ്ട്രാറ്റജീസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ടു വേർഡ് എ വേ ആൻഡ് എഗെയിൻസ്റ്റ് അതേഴ്സ് ഇത് നമ്മൾ നമ്മൾ ജസ്റ്റ് ഒന്ന് നോക്കിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നമ്മൾ ഇതിനകത്തുള്ള എല്ലാത്തിലും ഒരു മിക്സ്ചർ ആയിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ adjustment nadathunnad alle so we can say that a well adjusted person utilizes all the three of the strategies like towards away and against others finally uh, she identified idu idu enda nu the text il undu adu nu vaichu nokka appo it is easy for you to understand okay then നെക്സ്റ്റ് അപ്പൊ ഈ തിയറി ഞാൻ ഇത് ഇത്രയും പറയുന്നുള്ളൂ ദിസ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ദാറ്റ് മച്ച് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ബട്ട് കാരൻ ഹോണി ഷി ഇസ് എ ഫെമിനിൻ സൈക്കോളജിസ്റ്റ് സെൽഫ് അനാലിസിസ് ഓർ എ സെൽഫ് തിയറിക്കൊക്കെ ഒത്തിരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് കൊടുത്തേക്കുന്നതാണ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് അബൌട്ട് ദ ന്യൂറോട്ടിക് നീഡ്സ് ഷീ ഈസ് നോൺ ഫോർ ഹെർ തിയറി ഓഫ് ന്യൂറോട്ടിക് നീഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഷീ ഹാസ് ഡൺ ഇൻ ഡെപ്ത് റിസർച്ച് ഇൻ ദ ഫെമിനിൻ സൈക്കോളജി ദെൻ സെൽഫ് സൈക്കോളജി ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ഷീ എംഫസൈസ് ദ റോൾ ഓഫ് സെൽഫ് അനാലിസിസ് എസ് വെൽ ആസ് സെൽഫ് ഹെൽപ്പ് and uh, she is considered as a uh, neo freudian psychologist okay and uh, the main uh, the essence of this theory is that uh, the karen horne believed neurosis resulted from basic anxiety caused by the what caused by interpersonal relationship okay then one more theory is the 
that is Harry Stack Sullivan. That is the theory by uh, Harry Stack Sullivan. And uh, this theory it is based on the uh, people's interaction with others. And to the interpersonal relationship in unimportance, this is based on the e people's interaction with other people. That is, people interaction with other, especially significant people uh, in their life. Who are considered as the significant members of the uh, p significant members in the family, or the significant people in their life? Yes. Hmm? Who is considered as the significant people in the life? Parents, parents, parents. Uh, wife, husband, children, in-laws. These people are considered as the significant people in our life. And the um, our interaction or the people's interaction um, with other, especially with significant people in their life, that determines the sense of security at the same time, sense of self in them. Okay. Apa our baki significant members interaction, it will determine the sense of security at the same time, sense of self. So these factors motivate the behavior. So you can write it down. That is, uh, this theory is based. Please write this sentence. This theory is based on the people's on the people's interaction with other <clears throat> interaction with other people. That is, people interaction with others. People's interaction with others, especially, especially significant people, especially significant people in their life, significant people in their life determines, determines the sense of security the sense of security sense of self sense of security and sense of self so these factors these factors motivates their behavior uh, the core thing is that the personality it is shaped from our relationship with others or interaction with others. That is what Harry Stack Sullivan says. That is personality it cannot be separated from our social world. Namala uh, social we are social beings. Namka bakyola right or like interactions la that plays a very important role. That so he sh says that the personality of a person he cannot be separated from our social world. Namala social world. We can't say anything about the personality. And according to Harry Stack Sullivan, uh, tension that plays a very important role. She mentioned a lot about in her in his theory that is about the tension. Um, so suppose according to him, tension means that it creates a biological imbalance between the person and the physiochemical environment. Okay, but tension, I remember, uh, it creates a biological in impact between the person and the physio physio uh, chemical environment. What is uh, physiochemical environment? That is both inside and outside the individual. So, we have interaction, le, social interaction, le, or tensions, where in the some biological imbalance will occur inside our body. So, we can say that inside and outside the individual, some imbalance will be there. For example, anxiety. For anxiety, when the same the swabhaviga matter hormonal change will be there. So that he emphasized. So this anxiety can be considered as a disruptive force, which blocks our development and good interpersonal relationship. Apni continuous cytolytic tension or anxiety, if it happens, 
it can be considered as a disruptive force and why it is considered as a disruptive force because it blocks our development as well as uh, it blocks our good interpersonal relationship and uh, we know uh, and it is said that uh, the people develop their personality in the social context that is what harris tax sullivan says that means people develop their personality in the social context because she emphasized on the uh, um, interaction with other people especially with the significant members of the family and uh, through this way with the interaction uh, with the significant members of the family as well as with the other people <clears throat> people develop the personality uh, so we can say that uh, where pe many people develop the personality in the social context and if we have uh, any other relationship uh, or uh, with other people we would have uh, if suppose if he doesn't have any other uh, good relationship any good relationship with other people then what happen we would have no personality that is what harris tax sullivan says appa namukku social interactions koravana relationship illa society maite we have no connection then what happen then according to harris tax sullivan we would have no personality that is what she says so our development depends on our ability to establish intimacy with other people that is very important about social interpersonal relationship uh, allengil people's interaction with other people that is very important and uh, if, if suppose um, if you are unable uh, or we show some inability to establish the intimacy with other people then it will definitely affect our personality so anxiety can interfere with establishing satisfying interpersonal relationship appa uh, if suppose if anxiety arises inside the person then what happens it will uh, <coughs> interfere with establishing satisfying interpersonal relationship and she emphasized on attention then energy transformation um, uh, because uh, she says that the tensions it creates anxiety then drowsiness and the, the person will not al always be on a conscious level then partial distortion from reality all these things happen and um, usually uh, according to harris tax sullivan she see, he says that the tension arises from needs and uh, uh, she classified the needs into two types so she gave uh, enough importance to the needs also needs are classified into two types first is zonal needs and the second is general needs so what do you mean by zonal needs zonal needs means it arises from the specific body part so the body uh, also has some needs so zonal needs means it arises from the specific body part and general need means it is the overall well being of a person and uh, here i he mentioned other word that is tenderness 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 means uh, you know what is tenderness so tenderness he, she uh, the harris tax sullivan he considered it as a it as a basic interpersonal need tenderness harris tax sullivan he considered it as a basic interpersonal need and he also emphasized um, on energy transformation so when we become tensed according to this theory energy transformation means when we experience anxiety or the tension arises inside an individual what happens the energy it is transformed either into covert actions or overt or covert actions what do you mean by uh, covert action overt behavior or like covert behavior no yeah what is that Overt is more of uh, ex uh, exposing, ma'am. Like uh, exposing, coming to yes. the friend and showing, and uh, oh, covert is like hiding somewhere and uh, hiding, yes. uh, doing some actions. Okay. Apa uh, suppose if a person experiences tension or anxiety, some energy transformation occurs. That means the energy it is transformed either into overt action. Overt action means anything that can be observed. Sometimes it may be some uh, disruptive behavior, or uh, it can be some uh, covert action. 
some aggression will be there inside the mind mm? uh, so it can be the energy transformation it, it can be either to overt or covert actions and uh, then this type of behavior that is either it can be i, I mentioned that it can be either overt or covert behavior and this type of behavior that is that satisfy our needs reduces anxiety okay uh, if the beha some the behavior can be either overt or covert and what happens the a, this type of behavior either it is covert or uh, overt or covert whatever it be it satisfy our needs it is a behavior that satisfy our needs and finally the result is it reduces the anxiety so sometimes so we can say that it can be either for good or bad and uh, he also um, mentioned about the term called the malevolence in this theory he also mentioned about the malevolence what is called the malevolence malevolent means uh, the person uh, means uh, with uh, they wish evil on others what is the opposite of malevolent benevolent have you heard of the benevolent means wishing good things for others so a malevolent person exhibits satisfaction at someone else problem where all could problem a kondavuna samayath he seek some so he experience some sort of satisfaction so that we can say that such personality it will be very cruel or anti social uh, personality again he mentioned about the word uh, it's the, it's a malicious influence ma'am malevolence means malicious influence malicious influence in the sense Can you please make uh, it clear uh, anything uh, any malicious activity like influencing others on malicious activities like okay uh, and any sort of anti social behavior correct yes through this behavior the other people get influenced like influenced uh, okay as a leader who is not in ah uh. uh, okay please continue leader uh if any leader suppose suppose he is like uh, ex exposing his uh, bad behaviors so mm. others get influenced uh, with the that the followers also will get influenced by that uh, leader's behavior that is what you yeah. mean yes, yes. okay any uh, any way the malevolent person may exhibit some sort of satis satisfaction by seeing others problem so that we, we can say that he will a uh, slight cruelty will be the the anti social personality lack of empathy all those things will be uh, clearly evident in a malevolent person and uh, another thing is that uh, the, he mentioned the word lust then um, usually we can say that uh, mm, okay another thing is uh, about the uh, here also uh, a malevolent person uh, he lacks intimacy there will not be any close association with others and um, it uh, increases the loneliness as well as uh, anxiety so uh, in contrast to this malevolence there are some people who have uh, who have this sort of intimacy some they uh, they maintain some sort of intimacy with other people that means uh, they have a close association with other people and it decreases the loneliness and finally harris tax sullivan says that it decreases the anxiety among people so these are some of the terms uh, used by harris tax sullivan in her in his theory that is today first time mentioned about the first theory what was the first theory theory i mentioned today about uh, Uh, Skinner's theory, Skinner's operant conditioning. Then the second, what is the second? Law of effect. Law of effect by Tonde. Then, um, pardon, Karen Hornes. Uh, Karen Hornes. Karen Horney, not Horney. Karen Horney. You have to pronounce it as Karen Horney. Horney. Okay, then uh, Harris tax eleven. Please go through this four theories. Because any additive theories or other additive classes later come because uh, my in the throat is not okay. To us continuous class means it is very hectic for me. Okay, please go through the theories and if any doubt comes in between, you please ask me. Ma'am, uh, will you be sharing all this presentation to the main group because uh, so that we will be able to revise it? 
okay at the end of the class i'll do uh, one more class is there no next week it will be over so yes. after that i'll share it uh, some uh, instructors used to do a youtube video and send it so that uh, there will be an instructions also like uh, your okay. voice also there ah uh, okay uh, that i'll tell the uh, igno center hmm? yes madam okay. because i can't share it uh, they have to share it no, if you can kindly share the presentation and the group it will be beneficial ma'am yes. and that is what uh, what the coordinator told me that uh, they have to send it yeah yes i'm not supposed to send it so i will uh, ask this uh, i'll present this request so that they will send it to you okay yes ma'am thank you ma'am hello ma'am yes uh, in harry stocks i mean theory uh, you gave the definition of tension so i didn't get it uh, it, it creates a biological impact between uh, biological imbalance imbalance between the internal and external environment suppose when we experience anxiety hmm? anxiety hmm. experience in the same way definitely some outward uh, incident will be there at the same time it is creating some ch physiological changes in our body okay ma'am so that is the imbalance between the external and internal environment ipo nammal aalochuka ipo suppose when we become panic so many body changes or physiological changes happens just like sometimes the blood pressure it will come up uh, then the blood flow the brain activity uh, then uh, palpitation will come out sweating all those things uh, uh, happen no? so that is why so we see that uh, so many uh, physiological changes happens in inside our body so uh, some disequilibrium sometimes is a disequilibrium it happens between the internal and external environment so internal environment means our bodily changes okay ma'am ma'am i have one basic doubt actually so when i joined the course from the day one i'm having this doubt So yes. we have been studying the kind of theories and what is what is happening and everything. Are we going to study about the solution of these problems? Definitely, because uh, after completing the PG course, you will uh, you are supposed to be thorough with all the theories, and the th these theories we have to apply in various situations. That is very important. Suppose if you are working in the future, if you are working in the clinic. definitely these theories will be very helpful to you to um, find uh, to find out the uh, correct problem of the person oh. mm? so in the application level we have to apply all these things that is why the theories are considered to be very important in whatever be the subjects all the theories are considered very important so in the application le uh, level we have to make use of it okay, okay. Mm. Uh, but uh, i don't know this uh, uh, we are completing the whole theories of personality within 10 hours okay ma'am uh, so very uh, what is the uh, i mean next uh, pg for personality theories i mean i want to be, i mean i want to get in myself for a behavior therapist so what is the further course can be done after this exam usually after ma if you want to practice as a clinical psychologist you have to do the mphil in clinical psychology so only very few institutions are offering uh, mphil in clinical psychology that is uh, one is a uh, very few good institutions I, i would i would like to say that the good institutions that is one is from uh, nimhans nimhans they are offering i think only four or five seats seats are the then uh, ranji cap is offering uh, then i think km k k uh, that is manipal university that also kms you know yes. that also started then at, i think amrita hospital also uh, one course they recently they started but uh, i doubt whether it is uh, running now i'm not sure about it these are some of the institutions which uh, they are offering the clinical psychology after completing the clinical psychology you can work as a clinical psychologist but nowadays this uh, phd that is also mandatory because uh, in the clinic or any institution they ask for the phd if okay. even if you are in the teaching field that phd it is become mandatory mandatory now Yes, ma'am. And after the MPhil psychology, also the person can be uh, work as a. I mean, uh, for for because I'm the mother of uh, autism child. Okay. I mean, spectrum. Um, oh. They the people kept doing the assessment. So after completing the clinical psychology, you can uh, do all the assessment because. Uh, uh, 
yes okay. only i can do the assessment my query is i want to become a behavioral therapist yes so that what can be done ma'am like uh, uh, that because... first you have to register as a counselor once you are qualified you have to register as a counselor in the rca okay ma'am okay <laughs> that is very important without registration you can't uh, work as a counselor actually okay. that is the rule okay and i have come across that behavioral momentum of india so they are offering some courses mm. for the behavioral therapist i mean uh, we can modify the behaviors in our children so how about huh. that course ma'am uh, so which uh, that uh, which uh, which uh, any university is offering No, it's actually behavioral momentum. Actually, the main uh, uh, center is in Australia. So now they have started in India. Behavioral momentum of India. They are offering some uh, behavioral therapist courses. So I'm like, uh, after completing the MPhil psychology, clinical psychology, also I can do only the assessment, right, now, ma'am? I mean, ah, uh, uh, assessment you can do. After assessment, can I get into any practical? Uh, I mean, therapy sessions like. Yeah. Children? yeah definitely you can practice definitely after completing the mphil in clinical psychology you can practice as a clinical psychologist so uh, the main responsibilities of the clinical psychologist is uh, diagnosing and doing some intervention techniques mm? so intervention techniques in the sense you have to uh, uh, do various sorts of therapies and all and mm -hmm. uh, assessment you have to uh, uh, rely on various tests for the diagnosis so okay. once you complete the clinical psychology that means uh, you are thorough with all the tests okay ma'am okay okay thank you as, well as, the, as, as well as the therapy also you become uh, very thorough after completing this uh, in clinical psychology i am mentioning uh, means uh, i mean uh, i am stressing the point clinical psychology yes ma'am actually i have gone through the assessment for my son from clinical mm -hmm. psychology and later on i switched to the behavioral therapist classes so okay. like she is completed the mphil clinical psychology but in bracket they have mentioned uh, behavioral therapist so her class is actually very good and my son is very progressive he has given okay. some uh, sorting and coding and activities and all and home based activities okay so activities my son is becoming very progressive and okay. his behavioral also controlled so that okay. is what i am mentioning if i complete only the mphil psychology will it work or i have to go for the personality i mean behavioral therapist uh, courses or something but in india if you want to practice as a clinical psychologist you have to complete the uh, mphil course in clinical psychology that is very very important nowadays which is only in regular no ma ah regular okay that is uh, two years i think Yes, but recently I heard about that from the new education policy. They have banned. The yeah, MPhil. they had withdrawn that policy. Now even now uh, the uh, uh, Nimhans as well as uh, this uh, KMC, they are offering this CAP or all, all are offering the MPhil course. Okay. Okay, ma'am. After ma'am, after this course, can we start as a psychologist, like practice as psychologist? Uh, I won't recommend. Okay. Because if I am, young like a M Phil, I am a M Phil. Chey the time then I say, "Nyal, morning we have the regular class, and afternoon we have the clinic. So we will okay. have we are meeting with different types of uh, patients in the clinic. So we'll okay. get an idea of uh, what are the symptoms of uh, mania, what are the symptoms of depression. That's why we are straight to the end. We are not going to be able to do it.